Okay, how are we today? I'm good, baby. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself today? Hey, guys. I am Gabriel Cross. I suppose you describe me as a gay porn star. Okay. So, <laughs> Sawadee Krab, Mr. Gabriel. Do you know Sawadee Krab? I do not know. Sawadee Krab is. It's, yeah. Hello, uh, hi in Thailand. Uh, okay, how do I say it? Sawadee Krab. Sawadee Krab. Yeah, yeah, see? Now you can start having <laughs> Thai fans from Thailand. So, let's talk. Uh, I know you from gym. Yes. The story was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So we met in the gym before. We did. We got and chatting. And got chatting. And because we live really close to each other, we were talking. We were like, oh hey, like, do you live around in the area? Yeah. And then we were like, let's grab drinks or coffee sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then we were exchanging Instagram. Yes. But before, before, <laughs> before you <laughs> gave me yours, I was giving mine to yours, right? And you warned me. Yeah. That it was kind of racy. <laughs> Like, just so you know, my Instagram is a little bit, a little bit extreme. And you were like, sure. <laughs> oh, here's mine. <laughs> and then when you gave me yours, and I was like, oh, he's a porn star. A, sex oh. a successful porn star too. Oh my God. So that's amazing. <laughs> The next thing is that we did grab our coffee. We did. And we start chatting. The thing I was very interested in you is that when we talk a lot and start being reflective, mm -hmm. I find you very interesting and very Thank intriguing you. as a person. From my personal experience, right? I was a boy band growing up. So I grew up with a lot of projection from people yeah. on what I should be. For example, being straight, doing what I have to do, staying in the frame that is structured. Mm -hmm. And I struggle a lot till recently I came out and I started doing my thing. Yeah. I was wondering the same thing too like with you do people project you as like you know a sex object or yeah there are an awful lot of people have a what is that word pre preconceptions there we go sorry. preconception a lot of preconception uh, preconceived ideas of what you are as when working in the adult industry mm. the thing that's slightly shocking is actually outside of work mm -hmm. I don't tend to have that much sex so much of my sex life has become monetized okay that I'm not like a crazy slut all the time <laughs> That's Which people really don't expect. Because <laughs> what, from what they see from your work, yes, they have their own perception of you. Yes, like exactly. in their internal lives, what is Gabriel? Yeah. And I think I, I'm very lucky, I have a lot of very loyal, really wonderful fans who, and I think a lot of them live vicariously through a lot of the scenes I make. Okay. People like love the outdoor stuff and group stuff mm -hmm. and stuff that's not necessarily the most everyday of people's sex lives. Okay. And I found that type of stuff goes down a lot better mm -hmm. and I think people really enjoy the excitement of seeing something that they might ne not necessarily do themselves. I see. So you say they can leave their fantasy through you? Exactly. Yeah, I see. And like going out and knowing people, do you struggle? Because I do when I meet people. They think they know Cohen. So what they when they meet me, they have, a, they have a structure of what I am already. Do people? Do yes. You too? And I think you might have had this as well. It's even worse when you start to date a guy who's known you, known Cohen or uh, Gabriel uh -huh. as a presence before mm. they actually meet you in so person. So they know you from your product and from the news and from other people. Exactly. Okay. And that's when it's such an intimate relationship that I found that really doesn't work a lot of the time because suddenly I'm not, I'm a real person and I have a lot of flaws. I'm not the perfect idea that they had of me. Okay. And this happens a lot. This has happened a few times I found when I started to date guys who, who knew me from before, before mm -hmm. we'd actually met. And you do get it with people in social situations. It can be a little awkward at times. Awkward? Like, can you explain awkward? Sometimes people approach you in very direct ways. Okay. Um, because they might feel they already know you. Okay, so they're like, I know you. They, um, I, the one thing I get quite a lot is people kind of come up and just immediately start grabbing me. I'm That's quite like favorite. overly social, uh, kind of overly confident with, and I'm always friendly and... You, yeah, because you are friendly. Yeah. You are friendly, so people tend to... Uh, and I like, yeah, and I like interacting with people mm -hmm. and I kind of appreciate the amount of support people have given me mm -hmm. because that's the only way I've been successful is because of... Mm. And it's the same with you, it's because yeah, people again, are buying like, products and Like what you were saying, that does not give them the right to be touchy no. or... No, no, no. no. To touch, yeah. I, I do kind of believe to an extent because we've traded off ourselves as a brand mm -hmm. most, mm -hmm. um, we do definitely give up a certain amount of our privacy mm. and but there's certain boundaries there that sometimes can be crossed and it gets mm. rather uncomfortable. And then I think that's the whole point of the whole discussion just now is that we are humans. Mm. 
Yeah, and really. some a lot of the time we get objectified as you know like an item or product and it, it is difficult and it's not easy yeah and I think it's difficult for you know people from a third perspective or second perspective to be reflective and to be aware yes like oh my god like yeah Gabriel Coleman they are people and they feel and they get vulnerable and they I have actually, their privacy I do like being approached though like I'm mm. always really flattered when mm. people kind of come up to me and introduce themselves and on Selfies, that, I, that's always something totally, as long as I'm like not with my nieces or something, that's, <laughs> that's always something that's totally cool with me and I really appreciate knowing, like getting that kind of interaction with people. Uh -huh. So your nieces ask like, uncle? <laughs> like, it's happened with my mum quite a lot. Did you tell her? Um, we have a very English relationship okay. where we don't really discuss things. Mm. We have a very good relationship and um, she's very happy for with me with everything that's going on, but we don't talk about it. And that's okay, babe. Because yeah. again, it's it's what you do and yes. it's valid. If you want to keep it to yourself and yeah. no one has the right to take it away from you. Yes. And with this, you know, going on with work and stuff, mm. how do you keep it safe? Like, maybe you can do a, like an education awareness about safe sex too. <laughs> maybe not, why not? Yeah, so um, the stuff I shoot myself is pretty much always um, bareback, or mm -hmm. just gay slang, uh, for unprotected, no condoms. Fortunately, within the past three, four years, mm -hmm. um, something called PrEP has become very commonplace. PrEP? Yes. Let's talk about that. Okay, let's talk about that. Because I, I, I am not used to PrEP, I am not on PrEP, but okay. I've heard my friends talk about PrEP. Okay. So PrEP, when you treat HIV, mm -hmm. you use three types of drugs in combination. It's what's okay. called combination therapy. Okay. And with PrEP, you take a drug that's just two of them, mm -hmm. and if you're negative, you can take this drug every day, and it stops um, the HIV virus being able to bond to the proteins in your blood. Okay. So it's an antiretroviral, and it basically means that you will not catch HIV. HIV. And that's to take one every day? I take one every day. There are different ways to dose it. Okay. I think the most recognized and sensible way is to take it one every day. Okay. And that's uh, PrEP? PrEP. But it's seen the most incredible impact on HIV infections in London at Dean Street, which is the clinic I always mm -hmm. use. They saw an 80% drop. 80% drop? In their HIV infections. Wow. And that's... That was even before PrEP was readily available. Okay. And also now with more effective combination therapy and people being responsible if they are positive about being on treatment. Mm -hmm. Because if you are on treatment um, and you're undetectable, it means you cannot transmit the disease. Mm. Even, to, even though you have it, you can't give it to someone else. Okay. So we're very lucky that um, things have really True. changed in the last few years. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, very lucky that um, PrEP has come along when it has. Mm. Um, it's kept me safe. Yeah. And I think in this era, with HIV, it's more controllable now. But that's exactly. the, the, the stigma with it. It's a huge because stigma. Because the generation be a force, they had suffered and they, you know, it's been a long way. And Yeah, I think it's the gay community. It's something we really need to remember and recognize and mm -hmm. know about because if I was around in the 80s, I'd probably be dead by now, let's be honest. Mm. Um, if I was doing what I do for a living mm. in the 80s, it, I would not be around today. There's a lot of our community who hugely suffered mm. and weren't recognised and it took a very long time for governments to actually do anything about it because yeah. it was a minority group that people didn't particularly like. Mm. So they didn't really care that they were dying. It took like Elizabeth Taylor and Whoopi Goldberg yeah. and a lot of really influential people to really to aggressively step like in him. and try and um, try and push governments to start doing research so we can be where we are today. Yeah. So we came a long way. I yeah, mean, huge the treatment way. came a long, a long yeah. way. And then there's PEP too, right? PEP is really important to know about actually. Um, so if you have an accident, if you're drunk mm -hmm. and you um, have unprotected sex, you have a condom break. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you were unsure. Exactly. I don't remember. You can, 
I know here in London you can go to a clinic and they can advise you properly. I don't know in Thailand the kind of the availability. I wouldn't know. I can't answer yet, but I will put the link below for information because yeah. I think that's very people should know this because it's actually people knowing and having access as well because mm. that Definitely. it's all very well knowing about it, but then accessing it can be mm. difficult at times. How many hours is it? With so um, as long as it's within forty-eight hours, you want to go as close to as soon as you possibly can. Mm. After forty-eight hours, it's too late. I see. But you and it can be a little rough on your body. It can. I've taken it in the past. Really? Not severe diarrhea. Oh, so yeah, there is. Side, side effects, side effects. Side effects. exactly. Because they're they're quite strong drugs. They give you. They give you a course of strong HIV treatment for a month. Also, so if and it's if you if it's taken close enough to any potential infection, it stops HIV being able to take ah. hold of the body and stops you contracting HIV okay. even though it's entered your body already. Okay. So prep is to be protected. Yes, it means you take that all the time, mm -hmm. and it means that if you have unprotected sex, you're at risk of other STDs mm. or STIs, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call them. But <gasps> you're you're protected against HIV. Mm. Whereas PEP is for kind of emergency treatment. It's not something you want to get into the habit of taking, mm. but it's really important to know it's there. Yes. So if you do have an accident or make a mistake, um, you can do something. Yeah. Like that. But we do recommend protected sex. Of course or... we do. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's the easiest thing is just to use a condom. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm really interested in that we talk over coffee. Yes. Is the mental health within uh -huh. the gay porn industry. How is it? How, There's not from, from, your, from, from, your, from, your, from your perspective, what do you think? Um, uh, yeah, there's definitely some issues with mental health in the gay porn industry. Yeah. A lot. Because I think if compared to my previous job, fame comes quickly and then it goes quickly to yes. some people can cope, some people are traumatized. Yes. And I, I would think of our previous conversations, I would assume that it might be similar with mm. the porn industry too. Oh yeah, I think even faster. Even faster? Yeah. Mm. I think studios, especially with studio work, they'll attach to a certain model, they really like you, they'll throw loads and loads of like work. They, they like, okay, so they like you, Yeah. they'll put work, give you scenes. And then, but there's always this want for continuous turnover of new talent. Uh -huh. So there aren't many boys who kind of survive long term in the industry. It A lot of the boys kind of have a year or two two year cycle. Big, a year or two. Yeah. That's really quick. A lot of people working in the adult industry are using it for validation. Validation. Mm, what's that? Like to make them, they may have self-confidence issues, not been the popular attractive kid at school. Okay. Um, so they use gay porn to feel wanted and mm -hmm. needed and attractive. I'm not saying that I don't do this. <laughs> Just to be clear, and that, there's no definitely no judgment here, and that could be really toxic too. Like social well, media, especially now, when stuff. you start getting negative stuff on social media, that can be really hard to mm -hmm. deal with. It's and also when the work stops, and there's a shockingly high rate of drug overdoses and suicides, and drug overdoses and suicides. Yeah, because of the stress from work. I think it's suddenly the work stopped, and a lot of a lot of guys don't have an alternative skill set. Mm. To earn money. In terms like finance or to savings or yeah. how to handle it and take it to the next step. Exactly. So that it, it can be a very harsh, um, harsh kind of industry that spits mm. you out very quickly. And so that, that's one thing I'm really happy to hear from you because throughout many of our conversations, I'm like, wow, this guy has planned everything. <laughs> Like, but with you and when we talk, you sound very reflective. You know that you were fortunate. You seem like you work really hard on your projects. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're investing on things and you do saving savings. And I think that's really good. Well, I don't know when it's going to be gone. Because I'm not going to be young forever. And that's really as smart. As hard as I try. And my dermatologist tries. <laughs> So today, yes. thank you for joining me and uh, thank you. educating me on this and you know, making awareness. <laughs> right now, I'll give you all the time. Promote yourself, Instagram, Twitter. Okay. I would put every picture up and I will put a picture of you probably shirtless over here. <laughs> And all your con contact here, please go for it. Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram, the Gabriel Cross. Uh, on Twitter, it's Gabriel Cross Triple X. Then my fan platforms, which is where you can see. <laughs> All of my um, explicit work I update twice a week. You can go to um, onlyfans.com slash Gabriel Cross or just for dot fans mm -hmm. slash Gabriel Cross triple X. Okay. <laughs> that was complicated. Wasn't it? <laughs> but the link is all up. Yeah. You know, I'm going to speak in Thai, okay? Okay. สำหรับใครที่อยากติดตามนะครับนี่ดารานังโพชื่อดังในอังกฤษนะครับคุณเกเบิลครอสนะครับก็ตามลิงก์ที่ขึ้นได้เลยแล้วฝากไว้ด้วย Yeah, you, you understand what I said. Answer right? everyone. Yeah. <laughs>
โอเคทุกวันนี้เราจะไปแล้วสวัสดีครับมิสเตอร์เกเบรียลสวัสดีกลาสวัสดีครับว่าสวัสดีสวัสดีสวัสดีสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับบ๊ายบายยูดูโทรศัพท์แคมราโก้โก้โก้ฮะคุณจะให้ฮาร์มินเดลเลนส์ดูที่ไหนที่คุณได้ยินเพลงมาก่อนไม่รู้ไม่รู้ว่าคุณได้ยินเพลงไม่รู้ว่าคุณได้ยินเพลงไหมคุณอาจจะได้ยินเพลงไหม <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> so I don't know. I do not know if I've seen your porn before, or not, but I don't recognize you before. Okay. But now that I've known you, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm gonna go to bed. I have my iPad ready up, and then I was watching porn, and then suddenly this gorgeous man turned around, oh. and it was you, <laughs> and I died. Yeah, I have a lot of friends uh, complaining. I was like, "Fuck you, Gabriel! You're ruining this for me. I know you, and I love you." A lot of friends complain about this that they'll be like there watching porn and like, and, whoop, yeah, there I am. I'm like, wow, that escalated really quickly. <laughs>